One day I was having an argument with my daughter Vanessa, my, the beautiful girl sitting behind her. Pastor Kadi is my daughter, Vanessa. And we were having an argument and I was trying to bully my way. You know, a father bullies his way and telling her, no, Vanessa, this is the way it is. And Vanessa looked at me and said, Daddy, do you realize that you paid a lot of money for me to go to law school and get a law degree? And then after that, you paid a lot of money for me to get a master's in international relations and policy, policy affairs. Do you realize you spent so much money over that for you to think that you can bully me and I don't have a point or I cannot be able to contribute to a conversation? <laughs> hey. Hey. I said, okay, sweetheart, what was your point? Why? Because I did pay all that money for her to be a dogomodi. Now look at you. You have all the exposure. You have been able to read the word. You have been able to look at examples. And then you're still patterning your life with the people who are doing things in 1950s and 1960s. There is a better way and you can be able to distinguish and to design and say, no, this is of the world. This is good. This is of the world. This is good. This is nonsense. This is of the world. I will, I will, leave, I will put this in my life. I will leave that out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please take what works. Leave what doesn't work. Take what pleases God. Leave what doesn't please God. When you do that you are renewing your mind renew your mind with the word of God renew your mind with books study to make yourself approved unto God a workman that did not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth stop sitting there complaining about where you are you can change your life but the only way you can change your life is by changing your mind until your mind changes nothing changes but if you can change your mind in this Kenya you shall prosper I wish I could get a yes. I said in this Kenya you shall prosper. I said in this Kenya you shall prosper. You don't need to go to Dubai. You don't need to go to Baha Doha. You don't even need to get a visa in America. Because if you're a if you are if you are a lizard in Kenya, you are not gonna be a crocodile in America. If you are a lizard in Kenya, you shall be a lizard in America. But if you're a crocodile in Kenya, wherever you go, you shall be able to cry. You shall be able to shout and people shall bow out down to you. Lift up your hand and say, In this nation, come on, say, In this nation, I shall prosper. And so the other day, I met the political, the political class and I told them, I know you have called us hustlers and you have said that we are hustlers. But I told them, I told them, beginning from the, the guy at the top, I told them, sir, you may have called us hustlers, but we refuse to stay hustling. We are coming out of hustling and becoming multi-millionaires. We are becoming multi-billionaires. We shall hustle our way into the blessing of God. We refuse to be defined by we call third world. We are not third world. We are children of the most high God. The Bible says, I am a chosen generation. I am a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people who are called by God out of darkness into his marvelous light. I refuse to be called a beggar and a borrower. I am not a beggar. I am the head and not the tail. I am a and not beneath. I wish I could get 30 people to help me. Praise God for 30 cents. So I said, although the hustler narrative got us what? We are not staying there. No. We are blessed. We are rising. May I prophesy to somebody here? You shall be writing a check of five million and you shall not even be thinking about it. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, how do you renew your mind? By the truth. Write that down. Pastor Dennis was talking about it a little bit. The truth. John 17, 17. John 17, 17. Sanctify them, amplify it. Purify, consecrate, separate them for yourself. How? Make them holy. How? Somebody say the truth. Somebody say the truth. I want you to write that word down in your notebook and put it in capital letters. The truth. Because you see, the truth of the word of God will purify, 
consecrate, separate, make you holy, beginning with your mind. Beginning with your mind. You see, your mind is like a garden. Your mind is like a garden. If you intelligently cultivate and plant the right crops, remove weeds as they try to grow, put the right amount of manure, and seed it correctly, make sure that the garden is properly watered, guess what? That mind will produce a bumper harvest. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Of amazing thoughts, and those thoughts will govern your life. Because as your mind goes, so does your life. But if you neglect your mind, watch this. If you neglect your mind, then all manner of weeds and bushes and thorns and briars will grow in that garden. So, whether you cultivate intelligently or whether you neglect that garden, something will grow. Must grow. Without a doubt, will grow. So, if you are not cultivating your mind with the word and the truth and bathing in the truth and in the word of God, but you're spending time watching Hollywood, you know every series on Netflix, you can tell how it begins and how it ends. Now, I'm not telling you that you don't watch shows. Not, that's not the point. The point is the shows cannot be the priority. You cannot be spending five hours watching shows and not, not 15 minutes. You don't even spend 15 minutes with your Bible. It doesn't work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Now I know many of you may not like this line of preaching, but I'm going to help you now. It doesn't, it doesn't work. That's why we present you with materials like books that are meant to change the way you think. Because when you transform, the only way you can transform your life is by the renewing of your mind. Now, your mind is like a garden. If you neglect it, all manner of weeds, all manner of thorns, briars will grow. Suddenly, your thoughts are full of all manner of wickedness. And you can't be able to control that wickedness because as your mind goes, so does your life. So, hmm, let me give you my own example. I grew up in an abusive family where my father was abusive to my mother. I think, I don't know, but I think he grew up also watching the same thing. So he thought that is the way it should be done. But when I studied that whole situation, I knew there was something wrong with it. Now, how was I going to change my life? It wasn't just because of Mary. No, no, no. You know what I did? I went to the bookshop. I bought every book that talked about marriage and started to study it. Listen, I took responsibility for my life and my marriage. I took responsibility. I said, I will not follow the footsteps of my father and my mother. My mother and my father divorced when I was 10 years old, which was so tragic. It was so tragic, it traumatized me. I remember when, I, when uh, my dad was a headmaster of Hashima Road Primary School, and you know headmaster's children, <laughs> headmaster's children were either number one or number one. Amen. He is not going to be educating other children and my child is a dummy. So my father, if I became number three, he used to send me to go and get a cane for myself. <laughs> and so I would go looking for a cane and then I would be telling my friends Nataka, Natafta Kiboko. my friends are laughing so they would say Chukwai, and they would get me the one that doesn't break easily and they would be laughing at me and my dad would beat me until that cane whatever but I tell you I was always number one or two I was always there but listen to what happened the day my mom and dad divorced I was in standard five the following term I dropped from number one to number 30 because of the trauma of that divorce let me tell you all of you parents don't think that your divorce is not affecting your children i was so traumatized that suddenly i became an introvert suddenly nothing ever nothing made sense i became a rebel i became rebellious by the time i was getting to standard seven i didn't have any taste for education i didn't even perform to my to to, to my potential because education meant nothing i was just wishing for my family to be together that is all I wished for. And I was wishing my dad would change. 
But he didn't. And after that, everything just went downhill. I went to a school that I didn't even expect. My mom was crying because I was supposed to go to a national school because of the performance. But I dropped because of the trauma. After that, of course, I went to high school. I flopped again. Had to retake my exams from four. Passed, went to form six. By the time I got to form six, I got saved. That is where my transformation began. When I got saved, I started to renew my mind. I started to change my mind with the word of God. And then I said, look, if my mother and my father broke up and my father and my mother uh, didn't have a good marriage, that doesn't have to be my portion. I take responsibility for my life. I refuse to keep, keep on giving excuses of where I am based on where I'm coming from. You cannot change where you're coming from, but you can change the way you live. You can't change the things that have happened in the past, but you can take responsibility for where you're going. And I have come as a man of God to announce your best days are ahead of you. I say your best days are ahead of you. So do you know what I did? I went to bookshop. I bought books. I studied books. There's a gentleman called Walter Trubbish. He had written in, in, incredible books about marriage. In fact, I need to get a... Uh, can you get me his books, ZP? Uh, Walter Trobish. It's called Walter Trobish. He, he, had, he has written incredible books about marriage. And one time, he was actually was a missionary here in Kenya. And I studied them and I read them. I read them. By the time I was meeting Pastor Kathy, my mind had been renewed. My mind had been renewed. My mind has ch had changed. And when, she, when I met her, my, I, I was able to embrace her and to love her. Not on the basis of where I'm coming from. Because where I'm coming from, there was no example there. But I had to change my life because of where I'm going. Because I couldn't allow myself to become a victim. I am not a victim of my past. I am a child of God who has a great future. Are you hearing what I'm saying? On top of that, I had grown up in poverty. I had grown up, you know, we, we know, in this little house where our mother could only afford in a little place in Karyobangi with another 12 families using the same loose and using the same showers. But there was something in me that rejected poverty. My goodness me, let me tell you, I've been poor and I'm rich and rich is better every day and twice on Sunday. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But how did it change? How, what happened? I went into the, pass me a book. I went into the word of God. And I began to study about the will of God for me to prosper. I went into the word of God. And I read in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter number 9 and verse number 8. What does it say? It says that we know. that. Uh, what does it say? 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Uh, 2 Corinthians 9 8. Give me 2 Corinthians 9 8. And God is able to make all grace about you as you. That you have insufficiency in all things may abound unto every good work. And then I love also 2 Corinthians 8, 9. What does he say? For we know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor so that I through his poverty might be made rich. The Bible says, let the Lord be magnified who delight in the prosperity of his servant. That John verse 2. What does that John, that John verse 2 say? He said, beloved, I wish above all things. I wish above all things. I, God, can you imagine God is saying, I wish above all things you may prosper and be in health even as your soul what is the soul the soul is made of the mind the will and the emotions if your mind your will and your emotion are prospering you shall prosper and be in health I wish I could get somebody to say amen don't never ever allow the devil to tell you you are cast you are not a failure because you are cast you are not cast it is not the kajuju or kabuere who has made you uh, be where you are you are not cast you are just ignorant but the moment to begin to study and to read the word of God you shall begin to see a change in your life you are not cast Numbers 23 23 surely there is no enchantment against Jacob nor sorcery against Israel it is now said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done. No kajuju, magician, kabuere, sangoma, the brother of sangoma, the sister of sangoma, has any power to have any impact in your life. I hear what I'm saying. And let me tell you, when you begin to renew your mind, by the truth 
your life will start to take a different trajectory. Am I, com am I communicating with somebody here? So, Jesus said, sanctify them. How? By the truth. So, when you begin to get, get stay in the, in the truth, guess what happens? You become separated. So now, you are not like anybody else. Come on, talk to me. You're not like anybody else in your family. You are different. Are you hearing me? So, coming to church is not just gathering here so that we can have a little bit of clapping our hands and sing a few songs. No. Coming to church is so that we can completely liber liber liberate you from the past of failure and usher you into your future of blessing, favor, lifting, turn around where God begins to show up in your life makes you become an example to your generation so that you can testify of the goodness of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, you are not saved so that you can go to heaven. Let me repeat that. You are not saved so that you can go to heaven. You are saved so that you can bring heaven down here. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So, you go to heaven. But before you go to heaven, before you get there, guess what? You shall bring heaven down here. And guess what? You shall usher other people into that heaven and tell them, look what the Lord... Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's why I'm preaching to you. Because listen, out of your life, you shall build for widows. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. You shall educate orphans. Amen. Are you hearing me? Are you listening to me? You shall be an example to your brothers and sisters. That is what the kingdom of God is all about. Are you listening to me? So God is your king. You are a king because he's a king of kings. So, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a, a holy nation, a peculiar people who have been called out of darkness. Come on now. First Peter 2, 9. Have been called out of into his. So, the truth, of, the truth is found where? In the word of God. Somebody say amen. amen. Now, I want to look at John uh, and I'm going to close with this before we go to, I'm going to just talk a little bit about the 12 spies. But allow me to go to John 16. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. John. Uh, give me John 8. Let's go to John 8. John 8, 31. Somebody say truth. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Say it one more time. Say truth. Jesus teaches us, and this is what he says. Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed in him, what did he say? If you continue. Who? If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples? Now, listen to this. If you continue. So, the first word. Always when you study the Bible, make sure that you're looking at the word, how they are framed. So, Jesus said, if so, it's conditional. It's a need. It's a choice. So, write this down. The kingdom of God operates by choice. If you continue, the kingdom of God, Charlie, operates by choice. So, you have the choice to prosper or not. You have the choice to walk in purity or not. You have the choice to be a failure or not. You have to have the choice for abundance or not. He says, if you continue, so you make a choice. What is the choice, Douglas? The choice is to continue in the word. To continue. Continue means you stay committed. You pursue. You linger. You make a choice to abide in the truth. If you continue, what happens if you continue? Then you are my disciples indeed. You can be saved and not a disciple. You are a saint. A 
disciple, write this down, is the one who commits to be like the master. Is the one who has made a commitment to be like the master. So, if you commit to be like the master, then you are truly the disciple who wants to manifest like the master. So now, Jesus becomes the blueprint in which you are patterning your life after. You are not patterning your life after what other people say. You are staying in the word of God, abiding in the truth, continuing and lingering in the truth so that you can take on the tendencies of your master. You can know the disciples of Cuna by how they operate. Why? Because they have taken the tendencies of their father. <laughs> If you continue, Jesus said, if you continue, not if you look at the Bible once a week on Sunday morning when the bishop is preaching, but on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, as you are in a matatu or in an Uber, instead of having a conversation or listening to the junk, you put on your earphones, listen to worship and study the word of God. It doesn't even have to be long, 30 minutes. And as you continue and bathe your mind with the truth of the word of God, Jesus said you shall be my disciples indeed. What is a disciple? A disciple is one before you know it, they are manifesting like the master. So now you are like Jesus. You love like Jesus. You forgive like Jesus. You are patient like Jesus. You heal like Jesus. You love people and you, are, you want to be there for people like Jesus. If you continue in my word, what will my word do? My word will renew your mind. And when my, 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 my word renews your mind, what happens? Your life begins to take the trajectory of your dominant thoughts. And that is how I changed my life. There was no magic. There was no shortcut. It was a painful journey. A difficult journey of continuing in the word. But guess what? The more you stay in the word, the more it gets sweeter. The more you continue to read it, the more you continue to love it, the more you continue to apply it, the more it becomes sweeter. And before you know it, it has to take effect in your life. Can somebody say amen? amen. Then I close with this. The Bible says, then verse 32, and then you shall do what? You shall know the truth and the truth shall do what? The truth shall? I heard people say, may say set you free. The Bible doesn't say set you free. What does, it, what does the truth do? It makes you free. What does that mean? It means that even if the, your freedom was not available, the moment you know the truth, the truth has the capacity to manufacture your freedom, whether freedom likes it or not. It makes you free. If you continue in the word, if you continue, somebody say continue. continue. So the word says certain things. Whatever the word says, I want you to write this down. Whatever the word says is the truth. Please write that down. It's the truth. The Bible says the devil is the father of all lies. And then the Bible says, and there is no truth in him whatsoever. There is nothing the devil says that is true. So whatever the word of God says is true. It's truth. Whatever it says. If the Bible says he was wounded for a transgression, he was bruised for iniquities, the chastisement of your peace was upon him, and by his stripes you are healed. That is the truth. Hallelujah. And this is the amazing thing, is that people will read the newspaper and believe what is in the newspaper and take it as if it's the truth. Amazing, baby. People will read the newspaper. They will watch CNN and believe what CNN is saying. And you should look at people there feeling sad. CNN said, nations are going to collapse. Oh, there's going to be a much, me big financial collapse. And they are there feeling sorry and feeling sad. What they don't realize is that even if there was a collapse out there, my God shall supply for all of my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, God doesn't supply for me because the economy is working. 
God doesn't supply for me because the economy is wonderful. He supplies for me because I'm his child. And he has committed himself to me because I have a covenant with him. Jesus said, if you, if, if evil men know or being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, he says, how much more shall your heavenly father give good gifts to those who call on him or those who are his children? My children, Vanessa, today, I do everything I can. And she's already in her 30s, but I do everything I can to supply for her. I will go to the moon and back to make my sure my children are okay. I will do whatever needs to be done because I've read the Bible and the Bible says that a good man lives an inheritance for his children's children. So in my own capacity as a human being, I will do everything for my children. How much more? I said, how much more shall your heavenly father provide for you? I wish I could get somebody to shout yes. 